Uh, we're excited getting ready to start the season. Uh, you know, you work hard for these moments. You know, we're, now we're in the game week, that, 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 uh, that opportunity to go out there. Get on the field, play against somebody different. We've been bashing into each other for quite a while. And um, so uh, the opportunity for us to get out on the field and play another opponent uh, is really exciting. And our, and, our, and our guys, you know, I mean, they, they, uh, they practice and, and they uh, year-round uh, for these opportunities. There's not many opportunities to go play in games. And so they, uh, you know, they're, they're practicing nonstop, preparing themselves for these moments. And uh, we got to go take advantage of it. we got to go enjoy it. So um, excited to get this season kicked off, to get us underway, to get out on the field and go see what type of team we have. We've been playing against each other so long, you don't really know what type of team you have until you get to go play somebody else. We're going to find out uh, next Saturday night. Questions? Get a mic to you. Uh, you talked about it being different. It's going to be uh, a lot different for Southern Miss. They added a lot of junior college guys, a lot mm -hmm. of transfers. How difficult is that to prepare for when you don't have any film on those guys? Well, I, I think it's always hard. I, I, always early in the season because you're, you're, you know, when you're looking at film from last year, and it's always those first couple of games, not just the opener, but the first couple of games. Because this year's teams are going to be very different than last year's teams. And, uh, uh, you know, we're a very different team this year than we were last year. So uh, I, I think in the early games, the important part is, is really focusing on yourself, making sure you're executing at a, a very high level, uh, that we're putting guys in a position to go make plays. And, and uh, uh, you know, because it's hard to see what type of guys you're going to be playing against because they, they, they have a ton of guys transferred in. Um, so there will be a lot of different faces that we're playing against this year. Um, than we did last year, but that's all. That's going to be the case in the first couple games where they have new coaches and new players in game two. Um, you know, game three, a team we haven't never played before. You know, so I think all those early in the year, you end up uh, focusing on your personal execution. Has the team voted on team captains yet? No, we haven't even uh, held a vote for it. We had a leadership committee vote, so we picked our leadership committee and led those guys. But uh, uh, we'll do that sometime this week. That's obviously one of the questions going into the season is trying to replace Josh Robinson. Can you talk about how Ashton's looked in training cramp and, and other guys in, in camp? Yeah, they've done pretty well. Um, you know, it, it's uh, when you have that, you know, that guy stepped in and started role for the first time, that's a little different. I, I think Ashton's played a whole bunch. Brandon Holloway's played a whole bunch. Both those two guys have played a lot of football, but – uh, when you step into a starting role, uh, that can be a little bit different. So we'll see how they how they adjust to that. But I, I've been pretty pleased with the physicality of our running backs, how we've been running the ball. Um, you know, that's something to me that, that uh, when we have some bigger backs, that we got to play really physical. Dan, do you anticipate Nick getting some early snaps at quarterback the way Damian got some early in the year last year? I don't know. We'll see how the week of practice goes this week. All that's usually predicated on practice week and who's prepared, who's ready to play. I'm not even just know if we decided who the actual backup will be yet going into the game. So. Four weeks in, how do you think the offensive line has come along? They're coming. Um, you know, it's a position to me. We really, that, that's one of those positions where you're, you're breaking in a bunch of new guys you want to stay healthy at. Um, because, you know, what I want to do is um, I, I want us to be able to control the rotation of guys um, and, uh, and how they gain experience, how they grow, how they develop, uh, and not be forced to do it. So, um, but I'm pleased with our guys up front uh, in, in what they've done. I, I think uh, that we, you know, we have the opportunity to have some good depth on the offensive line if we can take our time to develop them to the point where guys are ready to go play in games. And uh, you know, there'll be a lot of new faces playing in the game on the offensive line for us uh, this year, and, and how those guys are going to handle game situations will be very different than how they handle practice situations. So we've got to see how they do that. And I know the Southern Miss series is a bigger deal right now. I know you like to follow in-state games and in-state mm -hmm. rivalries. Just talk about Southern Miss and maybe getting them back on the schedule one day. Well, you know, I mean, we'll see if uh, if, if they're interested in doing that uh, in the future. Uh, but I think it was great for us to have this opportunity to go play this game, especially kick off the season. Uh, it's a huge game in the state of Mississippi. And, to the people here in this state, uh, I, I know the opportunity to get that game played uh, for the fans of both sides. I think it's was it since 1989, since we've gone to Hattiesburg, 
uh, to play such a long time and um, in a game that really uh, can have a lot of tradition to it. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people in the state of Mississippi take a lot of pride. And, uh, I, I know everybody has so much pride in their schools. And so, uh, you know, the opportunity when the schools get to play each other uh, is huge. And, um, you know, we're fortunate to be able to be a part of it. And, I'm, you know, I'm happy. Um, for us, we've, we've been able to renew the rivalry. Coach, obviously you and Manny didn't need to fill each other out this time to kind of figure out if you could work together. But what's been your impression so far of being back? Ah, you know what? I mean, he's done a good job of uh, what we expect. You know, I think Manny, uh, you know, like I've always said, has grown a lot since the last time he was here. I think I've probably grown a lot, too. Uh, I, I know I have uh, as a head coach. So I think the uh, our, our working together, the relationship has been great. I think, you know, now we're getting into game week. It'll be another transition for us just uh, for him getting back on track of what our game week, you know, how our game week works. Um, what our schedule is, what our expectations, and how we kind of go through the process. But he's been, again, he's been through it before here. So even though things are a little bit different, maybe than they were five or six years ago when uh, when he was here last, there's going to be a lot of carryover to that. So I think that'll be a, a pretty easy, pretty comfortable transition. And um, you know, and we know he's a, he's a good football coach, so I'm not worried about uh, you know making sure our defense, our defense will be ready to play come Saturday. I think you averaged almost seven, more than seven yards per play against Southern Miss last year. I know you said you can't take from maybe what they'll be doing, but how much do you look back at the success you had maybe going through this game? Well, you know, I mean, part of it is I think uh, last year we had an experienced unit uh, coming out there. So I think that always helps in, in, in game one where you have guys that maybe aren't breaking into the game mode. Guys, You have guys that are uh, ready to get back to game mode. We have a bunch of new faces out there, so... Uh, you know, with those guys, we've got to see how they adjust to the situation. Also, you're playing on the road. It's going to be a tough, hostile environment uh, with a late-night kickoff. All of those things added to see how we how we come out and execute on offense. I thought last year against them, I thought we executed fairly well on offense uh, with the exception of the red zone. We weren't very good in the red zone last year. Uh, I think, uh, you know, three of our first four red zone possessions, we came away with no points last season. So... Um, you know, we can't do that and expect to win this year, If we, uh, especially being on the road. That we're going to have to make sure we, uh, we execute in the red zone um, against Southern Miss this year. Coach, how does that late kickoff kind of alter plans for today and this week? I mean, it makes, makes us not get a whole lot of sleep because, you know, we'll be practicing late at night just to try to get the body clocks ready to go. So I think we're, pra we're on the field from 7.30 to 9.30 tonight. That kind of changes your eating habits, changes all your whole routine uh, in a game week. So, um, you know, we got to get ready to go play. Not, I, don't, I don't particularly care for starting a game that late, uh, you know, with, with young athletes. You know, these, these are young students, college students, and there's not a lot of college uh, activities at the university schedule that are that late. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. But... Um, the, uh, but we'll, we'll make sure we're ready to play, and we'll just adjust our schedules around it. Coach, back to the running game. What have you kind of seen from Ashton and Brandon as far as their experience they've gained over the last couple of years? Well, I think the fact that, you know, they've played a bunch of football uh, certainly helps, you know, and they've played in games. So just making reads, uh, you know, understanding pass protections, which, to me, the biggest things, I mean, we recruit these guys because we know they put the ball in their hands, they can do good things with the ball, but there's so much more to us. I mean, playing without the ball, being able to run routes, um, more importantly, being able to pass protect, understanding the blocking schemes and looking at where plays are going to hit and not just relying on just pure natural ability while you're out there running the football. So uh, the fact that they've done it, they've been in games, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, both have several years in our system right now where they can understand those things and then uh, uh, and really progress to make plays within the system. You mentioned it in your opening statement, and Manny talked about it last week. It seems that guys are really anxious to get out there and play. There's been so much build up. How do you keep them focused this week and just make sure that they're, they're working on what they need to and not getting outside their head? Well, I think the good thing, this week's a different, you know, it's a little bit different as we, you know, you go through the schedules. The whole schedule this week changes. Um, the whole practice schedule has changed. The practice plans, you know, what we do within practice changes. Meetings change. So I, I think that is, that allows them to get into the focus of game mode. You know, you're out of, 
training camp and all of those other things to practice, you're putting a specific plan together for this week um, and you're getting into your game routine. So I think that will allow them to stay focused throughout the week uh, with the excitement of building up to it. I mean, I, I know I'm sure everybody's ready to, to get the schedule changed, um, the practice schedules changed, the meeting schedules changed, the routine changed into the, into the, uh, the game week mode. <clears throat> Talked a little earlier about the, the, the quarterback uh, play. How, how do you get a quarterback prepared uh, to back up Dak Prescott? When, when is the right time to get a player in there, and when is the right time for him to be able to be mentally and physically ready to take the field? I don't know. That's, uh, it, I think it changes with everybody. I, I've had a lot of different routines, a lot of different plans with it. We've done a lot of different things in the past. Um, you know, and uh, to me, there's a, a lot of gut feeling on where each player's at within their preparation uh, of when you need to get them snaps and when you need to continue to develop guys so that they're ready when there's numbers called. You know, I think the, the one of the things that's hard to do with the quarterback position is to ask a guy that has never taken a snap in a game before to come in and win a game late in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's hard to do, but... Um, you know, I mean, if, if that's what they need to do, they have to be prepared for that uh, at that time. If you can get them snaps at other points of the game, get them different experiences, uh, there's a huge benefit to that <coughs> within their development. But uh, you got to make sure you're, you're doing the, what's the best for the team and putting us in the best position to win football games as well. Coach, with a group of running backs, do you go into game one, you, you know, you're going to play a certain number of snaps, or is it a situational thing? How you decide to rotate those guys? No, we'll we'll look at snaps. We're gonna to try to play. You know, like always, we want to play a bunch of guys. We want to, you know, guys have worked hard. You know, we uh, work the guys. Um, uh, you know, when, when you look at, at, at the amount that uh, of what guys put in, you know, through off season conditioning, uh, through spring practice, through summer conditioning, through training camp. Uh, the, these guys have, have put in time to, to deserve to get on the field to go play. And, you know, when that's the case, uh, you want to give them that opportunity to get into a game and, and go uh, be rewarded um, uh, for all their efforts uh, on the practice field and all their preparation. So uh, for us, uh, we want to play as many guys as we can play. We want to, you know, this week, obviously, though, this week's different. They, they, we want to look at in preparation uh, that they're prepared for that moment um, and that opportunity to go into a game, and we'll make decisions who's prepared throughout this week to get on the field, and, and uh, hopefully we can uh, play a lot of guys, a running back and at a lot of different positions. Uh, to me, that, that we get them on the field and give them the opportunity uh, to go play. But you can talk about the camp that Logan took, and I know he could do a lot of things in the kicking game. I think he was on the depth charts and kicked off. Just talk about the plan for him. Yeah, well, you know, he's been pretty solid. Um, he's really been solid in, in working with fundamentals and working his techniques. Um, to me, uh, you know, we've, we've tweaked a little bit of, uh, of his technique work and uh, in, in what he's done. So, um, you know, we'll look. Again, I... When it comes to the kicking situation, a lot of that, I go through the game week and see that, you know, those guys can get streaky too. And, uh, you know, so I, I, we take a huge statistical analysis, look at it come game day and see where everybody's at, and even through warm ups to make sure that they're hitting the ball and they're on on game day to see who's going to do what. For your regards to Elijah, how physically is he ready to come back after his, uh, his torn knee? Yeah, injury? he, uh, about two, about. You know, the day before our last scrimmage, uh, you know, he got cleared to go out there and practice full. So he's taken some good reps over the last couple weeks and, and done some really good things with that. Obviously, he's a little bit behind the other guys, just a total number of reps. Uh, but I do think the opportunities that we've given him, uh, that we gave him during training camp, I do think he really jumped and seized on those opportunities. And, uh, you know, he can make things happen while he's out there on the field. He's strong arm, big and physical. Uh, we, you know, the key for him, the key for all for all of the, the young quarterbacks, you know, you look at the guys, Dak and, and Damian, that have played a bunch and have game experience. The other guys, it's just, 
you know, they could never get enough reps, as many reps as they can get to be prepared to get on the field. So, um, you know, Elijah's a guy that way that we've got to continue to get reps and develop uh, for when he gets his opportunity. Some of these like guys like Dak, a lot of the stars on the team, they go through all the offseason of taking pictures and signing autographs and being popular and famous. Once you actually kind of get into game week, does that sort of help settle them down a little bit? Uh, it can. I, I think there's different maturity levels with guys. I think, uh, you know, Dak a guy, is a guy that understands that kind of comes with it. And so, hey, it's game week. This is, this is what it's all about right now. Uh, but for some of the younger guys, I think it would be good for them, you know, that, that good adjustment to get back to um, game preparations, you know, to get back to the focus on, on all, 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 the, all that we put into, you know, uh, all, all, all the time and the effort that these guys put into it, that now this is why you do that, to get these opportunities to go play uh, the game on Saturday. So um, I, I want to see, hopefully, the older guys, I know they'll have the easier transition from – fan days and autographs and pictures, the transition into game week uh, will be a lot easier than for the younger guys, but they got to lead the way for those younger guys to make sure they understand uh, it, it's time to focus um, on the task at hand. When you have an early season non-conference game like this ahead of a big home opener things, how much do you guys talk, if at all, about holding cards under the table, that, that sort of thing, or is it just all go for um, we got to try to win here. this game, you know. Um, I mean, like everybody, we want to win every game, and you can't win them all until, unless you win the first one. So um, every single, you know, for us, our, our complete focus, practice, everything has, has all been on Southern and uh, making sure that we're getting guys in the right position to go play. You look across the athletic department, I think there are all sports, five or six players who are already graduated from their undergrad and still playing sports. you got four of them all starters. <laughs> Is there something you do to, to get guys farther down that path? Um, oh, I, I do. Th I think we uh, being here now for uh, you know going into year seven, uh, I think our plan is very much in place for these guys academically uh, to get their degree and keep them scheduled. You know, whether you know go from going to summer school uh, to making sure guys are taking uh, credit hours during the semester. We're not trying to just keep guys eligible or just push them through or do the bare minimum of, you know, of get a path in place that, you know, we talk, we'd love to guys to, to graduate in three and a half years in, if, if the plan works out the right way. And if you're a guy that happens to redshirt, uh, Dak Prescott, you, you know, you're, you have the opportunity to go earn a master's degree. And uh, that's really been a plan that we had set up in place. And, and it takes a couple of years to get it rolling and implemented and, you know, with the guys coming in. But now that it is that we do what we expect, um, we expect all our guys to get their degree. And, you know, when you have that plan and guys have the opportunity to redshirt, then they're going to have an opportunity to play within uh, – or the opportunity to get a master's degree while they're here and, and graduate early. How is the team's health going in the first game? We're actually really healthy, uh, knock on wood, which is pretty good. Uh, for right now, we don't have uh, I don't have anybody out that's uh, any lingering issues or, or health issues or anybody that's um, kind of out for any extended period of time right now. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure guys are bumped and bruised a little bit coming out of training camp, but uh, that happens. But overall, we we, do, we expect everybody to be to play in the game. You brought John Clark with you from, from Florida. I just thought process behind that, just how important has he been to this this program the last six seasons? He's huge. Um, I brought him from being a student assistant to being a football ops guy at Bowling Green and brought him to Utah and brought him to Florida and now brought him here with us. So he's he's been kind of running the uh, running the show within the programs that I've been involved in. For me, with the exception of I think one or two seasons. Uh, now for uh, really the the one season I've been with Adam since 2001, so that's a long time. And uh, but he's huge, you know, of just getting everything organized. Uh, really runs the the program behind the scenes. Um, you know, when you talk about football X's and O's, no, but everything else he's involved in making sure it runs smoothly. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know. <laughs> The, the uh, really, I guess probably the, I don't I don't know if I'm his boss or he's my boss or how that works out and being the assistant athletic director. But um, 
you know, within the program, you're kind of on even footing, and everybody knows that, that he's, he's kind of that my go-to guy in, in how we run the program and every decision that we make within the program uh, in organizing from uh, scheduling to, you know, practice periods to how much, you know, how, you know, in every aspect of things, he's sitting there working with me to make sure that we're running the program the right way.